Hello everybody, Happy New Year. I hope this video finds you all well. First, thank you to our new subscribers. We hit the 500 mark. No YouTube plaque for 500. <laughs> but here at Audiophilia, the growing numbers make us very happy. And each of you and your subscription is very much appreciated. We did notice in our analytics that 80% or more still watch the videos without subscription. Please take a moment to subscribe. Let's have some fun today in a David versus Goliath turntable and analog shootout. I will tell you it's completely unfair, completely unscientific, and hampered no end by the draconian YouTube copyright algorithm. I liken them to submarine hunter killer robots in the original Matrix. Maybe we can sidestep them a little with a little ancient Mozart and some beautiful Massonne, maybe 60 seconds of both. And of course, the biggest fun stopper of all in this type of video is the awful 128 YouTube playback bitrate. Prices are in US dollars, and all the gear in the video has been reviewed at audiophilia.com. The full techniques review will be up late February. So we have Techniques SL1200G, $4,000. The Bergman Audio Magna Turntable, $13,000. MBL's N51 Integrated Amplifier is doing the amplifier duties, $17,600, with Allnick Audio L7000 Preamplifier, $16,500 on preamplifier duty. Now the differentiation and price differences. The Technique's phono stage was the Icon PS1 Mark II, $2,400. Now compare that to what was accompanying the Bergman. The Olnick Audio H7000 LCR Phono Stage, $14,999, one of the world's great phono stages. Cartridges were more balanced in quality. The Bergman used the Phasemation PP2000MC cartridge, $6,000, and the Techniques, the equally fine but different Olnick Audio Amber MC cartridge at $4,500. Too much information? <laughs> Not to worry, I'll have all the information in the notes below. So, not a fair fight, I did tell you, but Techniques fans, don't give up hope. I think you'll find the unscientific results very interesting. I should add a little more about the sound on the video and how to be sure to give your ears much more than a grain of salt. We've talked about the bitrate, but the sound of the two turntables is coming through a small iPhone 12 Pro Max mic. And no matter how much Apple improved or how impressive it is for its size, it's very limited. We must also take into account room reflections, phone placement, and many other hindrances to a satisfying listen. So, with that in mind, enjoy the two brief excerpts, Mozart and Massonet. Volume matched as best I could, played through the wonderful Alta Audio Celesta FRM2M loudspeakers. They are $15,000 a pair. Up first, the techniques, followed immediately by the Bergman. Get your golden ears ready.
while you're trying to figure differences through the murky 128 and other hurdles, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll mention the cables and accessories before we get to our judgments. My friend Austin and my wife were also listening and helped to set things up. Their input was valuable and sometimes echoed mine and other times not. So, typical audiophiles. Cables were by Olnik Audio, Nordost, and AudioQuest. Stars all. Power conditioning by AudioQuest. The Techniques was placed on my Isoacoustics Zazen 2, a very capable and impressive isolation device. It's new from ISO and available in two sizes and is priced very reasonably. So, what we heard. We listened to the techniques, first through the icon phono stage, then later for some fun and a somewhat fairer comparison, we connected the SL1200G to the mighty Olnik LCR phono. With the icon, the technique system was 11K, table cut and phono. The Bergman was approaching 35,000. But to what you heard, the Technics has a more recessed presentation with a superb, sweet detail treble. The mid-range and bass are also very good, but this is where the Bergman's pedigree shines. With the Icon acting as phono, it's a very fine phono, I might add. The timbre of instruments had a leaner sound than the sweet as a nut Olnik Bergman setup. Interestingly, the Technics leanness filled out somewhat and timbre was more lifelike when the Olnik was in play. Not a surprise. But via Olnik, Icon, or Rega, check out the previous video, the generally superb character of the techniques was heard. It is a very fine turntable. That it came close to the brilliant Bergman when nearly all was equal is a real statement about A, the quality of the SL1200, and B, the law of diminishing returns in our audiophile world. I could live very happily with the techniques, made even better by the removable head shell and stunning build quality. When it was reborn, retooled, and reimagined in 2016, fans of the old table were pissed off at the price. Hear me, it is a steal. Thanks for joining today for some audiophile fun. When all said and done, after all the weekend's listening was finished for this specific video, is there a $9,000 difference between the two turntables? In my position as publisher of Audiophilia, I never forget that I'm in a very privileged position. Oh, lucky man. As such, yes, the extra outlay at accommodation pricing is worth that extra refinement and gorgeous instrumental timbre. But if I was a civilian, no way. You can get a great table with a famous lineage for $9,000 less. I'm in.